Hi, you're with India Post Live, India's first online news conversation web TV. I'm Ishan Russell and India Post is of course a forum where you can participate. We want your voice to be heard and uh, just it's a very simple way to do that. You have a phone, you have an iPad, you have a laptop, well use the internet, get in touch with us through social media, Facebook, uh, we have the India Post Live page. You can log in, like it and uh, post a comment over there. You can come in via Twitter, hashtag India Post Live to your tweets or use our Twitter handle at India Post Live or you can go to indiapostlive.com that's our website you can log in and post a comment over there or you can uh, simply view the video if you want to come in via skype or google hangout into this show you can if you want to do so in any other show well you're most welcome to do so and you can even watch the shows that have gone by and uh, think uh, about uh, what we've been talking about till now and what we're talking about today is a wish list for punjab so you went out on the internet asked people across various groups uh, from punjab uh, to give us their wish list for uh, the new government uh, at the center and uh, the wish list of course uh, now pops up in front of your screen so the first thing in that wish list is of course debt So they want a bailout package from the central uh, pr from the central progressive debt that has crossed one lakh crore mark revive small scale industries in Punjab increase quota in uh, of coal for power plants and steel industry. Modi should keep the Hindu hardliners at bay. What's his agenda for minorities and end of the drug menace? So that basically sums up uh, the wish list, broad wish list. We'll be taking these points one by one. We have uh, veteran journalist Anita Khatyal with us. She used to be with the Tribune as well and has covered Punjab extensively. Anita, what do you make of this wish list? Uh, a lot of economic focus uh, as far as Punjab is concerned. Yeah, there is definitely an economic focus. But, uh, you know, before we start, I just wanted to make one point that all this time <coughs> the Akali government has been complaining about the fact that there is not a, they don't have a, a friendly government at the center mm. so that's why they have been discriminated against and that's one of the issues they raised even during the campaign because they, they had such huge anti-incumbency against it so they were kind of putting a lot of blame on the center that a lot of the projects were not cleared and they, 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 they were not getting the kind of financial assistance uh, they wanted, even I remember Naresh Gujral when he came on your show, uh, spoke even about the drug menace when he said, and he said, you know, because the BSF and all is with the center and there was, you know, lack of coordination and so on and so forth. So the first thing, they now cannot complain. They have a friendly government at the, at, at the center. In fact, they are part of the government. Yeah, the they have a minister the... there. So that's one thing they will be hoping and wishing that now that they are part of the government at the center, whatever demands or wishes that they have would be fulfilled. And among them, I think the, 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 the most important or the most pressing one is definitely the debt burden. I mean, they've run up a huge debt burden of one lakh crore and they would be looking out for a bailout package, which they hope will, and will kind of <clears throat> help them because don't forget, they are now looking at the next assembly election. Mm. You know, so they need something because this 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 election has come out has kind of sent alarm bells ringing. You know, in the government over there, that if this continues like this, the Akali, uh, you know, popularity is going to slide even more. So, so they need to, to to kind of do some quick damage control, and they need to get some benefits from the government, whether it's uh, you know financial or in whatever form. But they definitely need something, and this is certainly on top of the list. All right, we, let's get in voices from Punjab. Gurpreet Barar joins us. Uh, Gurpreet, thanks very much for coming in. Uh, your wish list for uh, Modi Sarkar. Well, thank you. Thank you, Sasrikal. I think we need to provide better health care as well. Better health care and infrastructure yeah. should be added to the wish list. Uh, without having a good health care, um, uh, we can't achieve it. The, uh, cancer rate is so high in Punjab and hospitals, uh, basic health care community, we, do, we, we are unable to provide them to the general masses. So I would recommend that center should put in a lot of uh, weight on opening new hospitals, at least one major hospital in a 50 mile radius or 50 kilometer radius so that if there is an emergency, people have access to good health care immediately. That is one of the main things on my wish list. And number two, we don't have a good infrastructure to support uh, people of Punjab uh, we, or industry of Punjab. We don't have any major airport in, in the state. 
uh, Punjab is very well connected uh, internationally and we should attract the global investors to the state. Uh, for that, we should have direct access to the state. Uh, there should be a major state-of-the-art international airport between Ludhiana and Jalandhar, which are the main uh, economic uh, capitals of the state. So that would help. Um, Right. Uh, right, interesting right. points you make over there, uh, all the way from Phoenix, uh, Arizona, and the United States. Thanks <coughs> very much for coming in, uh, Gurpreet. Uh, but uh, healthcare, and, and it was a very interesting story, Anita, because uh, during the Rajasthan elections, people were telling me that people from Punjab, because Rajasthan had a free health scheme, they would go all the Absolutely, way to Rajasthan yeah. to get treatment done yeah, yeah. because Punjab did not have adequate health facilities. In fact, the train was called the cancer train, mm -hmm. if I remember right, especially the area yeah. Batinda, uh, area around Batinda, mm -hmm. that where the, the most of the cases are from on, on that uh, that part of Punjab, and because the healthcare facilities were so poor, they had to go, like you said, they had to go across to Rajasthan, and and that's why those train loads used to go, and that's why it was called the cancer train. And uh, if I remember right, I'm not sure, but I think some uh, the, 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 they have uh, during the UPA government and towards <coughs> the end that they laid the foundation stone uh, of a cancer hospital. Uh, but uh, you'll have to check that out. You know, I, right. I'm but not clear yeah, and whether it's the foundation stone, or whether the hospital was opened. I'm not sure. But some effort was made in that direction to address this issue. All right. We also have uh, Gulraj coming in uh, from, all the, from Canada, from Surrey. Thanks very much for coming in, Gulraj. Uh, what would your uh, wish list uh, for the Modi Sarkar be? Uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, a couple of things. First, uh, I would like to see a development in education because uh, I've been teaching in, in Punjab uh, since about from 2000 to 2010. And I have realized that uh, the higher education system in Punjab is pitiable. I mean, we have these uh, educational shops that have cropped up, uh, imparting third-class education, unfortunately having uh, extremely uh, poor caliber teachers. So that's one angle uh, I would like to talk about. At the same time, uh, in spite of the economic packages we talk about, the Shromni Akhandal, the, the ruling party in Punjab, being a part of the NDA coalition, obviously they should, I, it's a very big should, but they should be in a position to deal with all those issues uh, related to Punjab. But that at the same time, I think it is a uh, time that, uh, you know, it's going to be the 30th anniversary of Operation Blue Star and the, uh, uh, the, the, the what, what do you call the genocide of the Sikhs. And, I, and under such circumstances, I believe it is high time you have a Shromni Kalidal member of the first family in the Council of Ministers. You have a BJP government with a brute majority. And I think it's high time they actually do something about uh, uh, bringing uh, the people who are guilty to verdict. Is this an issue that is relevant? Vishal Dhaya, uh, associate editor with our, uh, Rajya Sabha TV, also joins us in our studio. He's covered this extent, uh, election ex extensively and all the previous ones before that. But uh, is that an issue uh, as far as Operation Blue Star and Justice and all these uh, things uh, that if you talk about the 80s, it was a lot of turmoil. Which uh, is, is that, Has that been addressed? Has Punjab moved beyond that? Well, uh, uh to an extent, uh, it seems yes, but then uh, if you uh, go a little deeper into uh, uh, the uh, the rural heartland as well as uh, specifically those areas which were infested with the uh, uh, you know uh, militancy during 80s, uh, uh, you would still find that uh, that that emotional factor. We can still uh, uh, you know I'm, I'm sure if, uh, everybody who's gone to Amritsar uh, uh, would would agree with me that you can still find uh, Bhendrawala T-shirts uh, very openly being sold. So uh, we can't say that uh, the the emotional uh, uh, you know connect is is over it's it's not over and uh, yes specifically uh, 84 uh, sikh rights is a very uh, you know um, an alive issue as far as punjab is concerned that's why we saw uh, you know everybody uh, making promises even uh, even today we had uh, this uh, statement coming in from punjab's uh, deputy chief minister saying that uh, yes since it is a, a bjp led government in the center we are hopeful that uh, now is the time for uh, justice for 84 uh, uh, sikh right victims so obviously that is an one issue which is going to uh, play a little uh, lot and let's not forget the very fact that Aam Admi Party's four MPs, that's their total strength, also comes from uh, Punjab and this was one of the issues uh, which even Aam Admi Party had. So obviously this, this issue is going to be alive for quite a time.
All right, we also have son Pratap coming in uh, from Gurgaon. He, he's an HR professional. Thanks very much for coming in, Pratap. What would your question be? Uh, hi, good evening. Uh, my uh, like in, in, on, the, on the topic, uh, most of the points people have covered, like 1984 sex riots, is is still a major topic. I would say people who uh, who are there in Punjab, you you speak to anybody, anybody in Punjab, ask them if they want what they want, they will simply say that okay, we 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 still want justice, even if it is 30 years from that time. So it it, it will never go away till the time there is there is actually something which is being done by by the judiciary of this of this uh, country we uh, like if you see, see the contribution of punjab only i'm, I'm not uh, here to list it or boast about it but it is it is still commendable and even today it is commendable uh, it's, it's not about the history only now coming on to the other points which i would uh, like to mention from my side one is the only resource that punjab is living on is water so the the, the water management has to be a priority for the state government and the central government as well. So uh, we, we would like to see some concrete schemes on water management and uh, on, the, on the usage of water and how the, how the, uh, the government, uh, government is uh, working towards conserving water in the region. So uh, that, that's a major point that we should be addressing. And another point is uh, there, there is so much of food grain every year. There are, there are new, new uh, higher, higher targets have been set and they have been achieved for the food grain production. But are we are we able to manage all that food grain? No, we we, we haven't been able to do, done the, do that very very well. So I would also like to uh, like to see some concrete uh, a complete revamp revamp of the food grain uh, management and the whole supply chain of uh, the food grain picking up from the market and going into the uh, through the entire PDS. So that's that's what I think the, the focus should be. Apart from all those, all the all that history that has to be that has to be set right. So these are the things that we should be focusing right now as well. So th this is uh, something that I would like to contribute to the discussion. All right, uh, the, the, the Punjab, the land of the five rivers, and uh, we, we have a, a minister for the Ganga. What about the five rivers? I think, but uh, that that is a critical point over there. Production. I mean, Punjab was is the grain bowl of India, as yeah, they yeah. say, I and think uh, agriculture is going yeah. to top top the uh, top the list, wish list of the Akali government. Mm. I mean, they have, uh, they've already, I mean, I remember earlier when they used to come <coughs> with their wish list when Manmohan Singh government was in power mm. and mm. among the various demands that they had was the, uh, that, uh, that they should get a better MSP mm. and MSP. that should be linked to, to uh, it should be, um, I think, 50% higher than the cost of production and a host of uh, other other kind of uh, incentives to boost agriculture and farmers over there, you know, whether it was credit or insurance or better inputs and so on and so forth, you know. So, and of course, what he said was, of course, about the storage facilities, because a lot of this grains just is rotting in the fields, you know, mm. and, and I mean, it, it, it's just a sheer waste, you know. So, so that factor also will be kind of, uh, will be kind of, uh, Will be a, will be on their list, you know, when, uh, when the when the. the all right, so they, they'll be they, applying pressure on Narendra on, Modi on these subjects. But yeah. what about a bailout package? Because Vishal, uh, the Akali certainly have run up quite a debt, haven't they? Well, they have, uh, and if you look at uh, the the finances of the Punjab government, uh, the last we heard of uh, that uh, these guys were uh, mortgaging their buildings to go ahead and pay uh, the salaries. So uh, obviously, that was a very uh, you know uh, I would say a, a scary point for uh, any government's uh, you know finances. But then, uh, uh, given the fact that they are a partner in this government, uh, I don't think that. Uh, the Punjab government will have a lot of problem getting finances from the central government. The problem, uh, uh, the solution rather uh, to a major problem which they should focus on is getting their uh, you know financial mathematics right in the state to ensure that they get out of this debt somehow or the other. Because let's not forget that two and a half years down the line, uh, the this uh, sad BJP government in Punjab will also face the assembly but elections. But people do know about this debt. It's not an issue that the people are not aware of that how much their debt uh, the government is under. And I, I mean. 
mean, people from Punjab have told me that the Akali spent it all even before they went into the previous uh, election, the assembly election. Well, yes, people are aware, but then, uh, of course, uh, you know, the government incurring so much debt is that is not that uh, a, a sentimental uh, or, or emotional uh, issue in uh, Punjab, uh, because there are several other issues. Of one which we were talking about, uh, uh, you know, better facilities, better MSP. Another very important thing is we've seen uh, in in Punjab, we've seen farmers experimenting. Now they're not even uh, they're not uh, contained to uh, the traditional uh, uh, crops. They're, they're moving into cash crops, be it fruits, vegetables. We see a lot many, you know, farmers taking initiatives. So obviously, uh, the state government will have to go ahead and ensure that they get some or the other incentive from uh, the centre to uh, sort of uh, um, propagate or further those uh, those interests which uh, farmers have. We, we've seen a lot of, uh, uh, you know, interesting entrepreneur ideas from the farmers of Punjab. All right. Uh, yes, uh, you wanted to come in. Go ahead. Mohit, go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my wish list is also the same of the other participants, and I want to like like uh, health, education, and the air connectivity. The irony is that Ludhiana called the city of mercy, and uh, what you see, there is no air connectivity. Even the recent news, which was coming from the department, that they have shunned three port lights from the Delhi, and I don't know what has happened to that. And if you see the uh, what you say, the commerciality of our city, that it's a textile industry, another one, Tirupur investment wall. So you see the radius covered by the Ludhiana in, in, in uh, what you say, in covering that industry is too large. And air connectivity is a major issue which should be given. And apart from this is a power surplus, as you discussed, you briefed earlier, uh, while you begin, that we're more dependent on the coal, coal reserves, even uh, we're more dependent on the name. And the recent announcement of the name was that they have they are charging a rupees 100 per ton for extra, for, for the what you say for conveyance extra that you have to deliver the goods. And I would share a fact with you that if we if we had we had a, we would have produced the electricity that would have cost us 3, 1300 crores. And if now we are buying, it would cost us 2000 crores because most of the power plants are being shut due to the reason that the non availability of coal. Now the question is whether we have to think that we we need to go beyond the coal. We need to go beyond the thermal plants, or we should think of some other alternatives of the power production as well. So the major chunk, 700 crore fees, are going just because we are not able to produce this much of energy, and we are just buying from other agencies. So All that's right, so the issue, I think. Yeah, the, I'm, and, and for the land of Punjab, the land of the five rivers, producing energy shouldn't be that much of a problem. Where have the Akalis gone wrong? Or yeah, has it been progressive governments, Vishal? Well, uh, if you look at, uh, you know, the uh, power production, it seems uh, this was an area which was uh, uh, overlooked not only by the Akalis in last two terms, but by the previous governments as well, because uh, there's not been much efforts. Uh, yes, you're right, there are five rivers, so why why not if if, uh, if Himachal and Ut uh, Uttarakhand can, uh, you know, yeah. put up uh, hydro projects, yeah. uh, why not uh, Punjab? But then uh, there is, uh, and let's not forget one very important fact that the first uh, power project of this country and the, uh, the major, uh, the, the biggest one is located uh, uh, the, uh, between Punjab and Himachal. So, so it seems uh, that was one area which was somehow the other taken for granted by uh, the successive state governments that yes, uh, this is something which we can go ahead and take tackle on a little later. Let's uh, move on to uh, the other priorities first. And since it was uh, more or less, uh, uh, you know, uh, agriculture based economy, so so, so the focus was on uh, uh, giving uh, free soaps, isn't it? Like uh, you know, uh, free, free electricity, power, free yeah, electricity, yeah, yeah. free water, free water, that was a and, then, and, and then and then um, claiming uh, the uh, the compensation or, or rather uh, I would say uh, uh, you know getting it in return from the central government, subsidizing yeah. from central government. Uh, all right, Mohit, you have a point. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, as you were saying, that uh, this right, this can't be in the right in the topmost list because uh, what I have seen that major units, major units from Ludhiana are moving out of out of Punjab. They are moving to Madhya Pradesh, moving to UP because of the power power failure. Because they have to serve two two week, two days a week for the shutdown. If they are not able to produce as much goods or what you say, they are not able to run at the hundred percent capacity. Then how can they how can they what bring more employment opportunities for us? So that's a point of the concern that uh, if you say that uh, I think the employment 
it should be linked with employment. Now, if they are not able to work, the industries are not able to work, then how could they generate the employment opportunities for the younger people? Right, so yeah, interesting point to make. I just, yeah. I just wanted yeah. to make a point, you know, since you mentioned industry and industry yeah. shifting uh, to neighboring states, you know, whether it's UP or Madhya Pradesh or whatever. I just wanted to make one point over here. One is power, of course, is a major issue, you know, which is driving them away. But the other thing which is also driving people away on and also ensuring that, I mean, stopping people, investors from uh, industry from coming to Punjab is the fact that. The neighboring states like Himachal and all get huge tax incentives, you know, whether it's Uttarakhand or Himachal Pradesh. And that has been also a major sore point with Punjab, you know. Because they say, I mean, you have Punjab is, I mean, Himachal Pradesh is like on their doorstep. Hmm. Baddi, where is all the industries have come up, which is Himachal, is just half an hour, one hour's drive yeah, well, from Chandigarh. So and, well, and so they that are getting all the grounds of uh, yeah, Punjab state Punjab. that uh, this, you separated Himachal and uh, most of the incentives. So incentives are go go going there. So there's a huge flight of capital over there. Plus the, in the industry is not coming to Punjab because they have they get a better bargain in these two states. All right, fair enough. Gurpreet, you want to make a point? Yes, I did, but uh, they already made my point that mm -hmm. incentives have, have been given to our right, neighboring but, uh, states. Okay, uh, in, I, I, in I, general. Yeah, but I just want to take a broad consensus. The Amani Party won four seats in Punjab. Uh, so, all of you, do you think that corruption is something that, of an issue that could be on the rise in Punjab uh, as far as the populace is concerned? Gurpreet, why didn't you go ahead? First. Yes, uh, and I was going to come on that thing. Uh, th these are. I would consider part of basic communities, providing a safe environment. Uh, corruption should be to the minimum. And I don't think uh, corruption, because everyone learned lesson from this elections. They, they learned that uh, uh, people are more aware these days. And uh, it is not traditional election or traditional way they can handle or treat people. So I don't think uh, corruption would be a major issue for another two, three years. Uh, but the focus must be providing basic amenities, for example, providing power, good infrastructure in the sense of uh, uh, internet, telephone, clean water, clean air, healthcare. These kind of things should be on the priority number one for the current government. All right, uh, but the other priority that, uh, and the final one that I want to talk about is uh, the drug menace. Punjab has a major problem. It finally got some light in this election. It's been going on for many years and it was really brushed under the carpet. But thankfully, in this election, we talked about it. Will, will any action be taken about it, uh, Anita? Well, uh, I think uh, they will be compelled to do something about it because they, they, they must have realized, uh, the government, the state government must have realized in this election that they, they lost Amritsar because, I mean, that was one of a major factor in that election. So, I mean, they cannot afford to shut their eyes to it any longer. And like my colleague also said, that they have an election coming up. And, uh, and, and it, it, it's, a, it's a major problem. I mean, this youth is, is, you know, there's unemployment. And because there's unemployment, they're taking to drugs. And drugs are freely available. And there's collusion between, you know, the, with, the, with, the, with the law, legal, I mean, police and so on and so forth so so it, it, it's it's a widespread thing you know and you need to really crack down on it and and there are a lot of powerful people involved you know so you yeah you have to take very uh, stern action go ahead Gujar. do you want to make a point about the same um i migrated to canada in uh, september 2010 and the last time i actually went to india was in february 2013 so it was only after about two and a half years and in these two and a half years, a major thing that I actually realized was that the abundance of drugs such as heroin and smack. I mean, maybe I was uh, maybe I was in, living in a fool's paradise earlier, but the fact is that the availability of such drugs, especially at the village level, is mm. so easy. It it it's I was it's literally it's shocking. What I'm trying to say is that when people start making fun of. Uh, such uh, issues and in fact associate certain drugs with certain cabinet ministers name i mean when such things come up obviously it means that there is something seriously wrong there seems to be a collusion we know that there was a collusion of uh, politicians as well as uh, a nexus between criminals and politicians but the you know a nexus be between politicians criminals police officers as well as the drug peddlers it's a it's a it's a very it's a, it's a very dangerous kind of a nexus and uh, it, it needs a political will as long as 
the government is willing to do something about it, only then can there be a change. Now, what we're actually seeing is it, it's more of a cosmetic effect, you know, uh, trying to uh, uh, arrest the low-level drug peddlers. I mean, it's the kingpins you need to arrest, and I think that is where the challenge lay. But is it too late I in the day, Vishal? Is it too late to in that? the day? Your most of your rural youth, if I, according to the surveys that came out during this election, are addicted to drugs, and that is a major problem. It's not just in urban centres that you have unemployment; it's across the board. It is indeed. It is too late, but then uh, better late than never. It's it's like uh, if you don't start doing it now, then uh, whatever is left of uh, Punjab's youth. Uh, will be sort of decimated uh, forever. Because uh, as uh, my friend was saying, he uh, is perfectly right. It's, it's available in, in villages, uh, just like, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, I would say, uh, if, if you remember during our childhood, uh, we, we used to go to uh, small shops and we, we could buy, uh, you know, small uh, toffees for 10 pesas, 20 pesas, 25 pesa. The very fact is that this doesn't come for 20, 25 pesa, but then it is easily, readily available in all forms. And, uh, and it, it, it's not possible uh, such a deep penetration is not at all possible if the authorities are not involved. That clearly means that the authorities are involved. Now, this will be a very big major challenge for the BJP government at the center. Uh, it's, it's an NDA government, but it's led by BJP. Now, if you look at the political angle to it, then uh, uh, Shiroman Ekalidal uh, doesn't need BJP to run their government in Punjab. They have the majority on their own, but they have a very old alliance. It's, it's one of the oldest allies of the BJP. The same is the case at the centre as well. BJP doesn't need Shiromani Akalidal to run its government in the centre, but then since it's a very old alliance, uh, uh, we will have to see whether or not uh, those who are running the government at the centre would uh, consider ruffling the feathers a little, uh, you know, uh, on, on the wrong side, if at all that serves the purpose of controlling this particular problem. All right, interesting point he makes over there that both are not dependent on each other. I, I like to put that question across uh, to uh, as a final word uh, to Sant Pratap uh, and uh, all our guests on Skype. Sant Pratap, why don't you go ahead first? Yes. Do you think the Akalis uh, would take on the BJP as far as uh, getting the demands met? Uh, just to uh, add to one point uh, regarding the drug menace, like there was there was a case of Mr. Jagdish Bula going on. Hmm. He, he actually named uh, named the uh, cabinet minister of Punjab government, but uh, there has been there has been no headway uh, after that. There is no uh, like ongoing inquiry uh, following it up. So that's uh, adding to that. But uh, on my point, on my concluding take, I would say there are there are issues related to governance, related to uh, basic education, uh, uh, health care facilities, and then uh, the, the resources that has to be uh, that is managed for Punjab. So that's that's a, a bigger challenge. But the corruption and uh, the drug problem, which has been the limelight of these elections, they will they will continue to uh, be in the light in, in the coming time as well. And to uh, to uh, consider uh, like another point that we have to add here is that Punjab government has started some operations in some villages in Punjab a few days back. Uh, they they uh, they actually nabbed a few. Uh, I would not say few, it because it numbered in hundreds. That in one day there were there were uh, hundreds of cases registered from from one village only. So that's the uh, again for against the drug peddlers. So and people have actually been uh, arrested as well. So they have they have started on working on those lines. Maybe let's see how uh, how far they can go. And uh, uh, from the from the central central point of view. I think uh, BJP should press uh, uh, press Akali Dal to go ahead because uh, I don't think so. It, that Akali Dal can afford to lose a, lose an alliance with BJP. Maybe they, they can they can uh, they can afford in terms of numbers, but in, not in terms of the presence they want to have at the central level and the state level. All so right, fair they, enough. They have to go with the, with this. Right, uh, <laughs> boy. The final comments from you. Yeah, I just want to say that uh, if I'm industry generate employment and curb the drug management. And the second thing is, the, though we have the state of art facilities and the health facilities in Ludhiana as well, DMC and CMC are there, but they're not affordable. You can't think uh, of getting a quite reasonable treatment over there. And it caters almost all of the Punjab. If the people come from the likes of Bhatinda, Rajasthan over there, and you have to pump in some investments over there in the health sector as well. And uh, this is my goal. All right.
Final word, Anita, from you. Uh, as far as what Vishal was pointing out, would be the Akalis be willing to ruffle feathers and get their demands met if the BJP is not very conducive? To no, but I mean, I think the Akali. Why wouldn't the uh, BJP government not be willing or to meet their demands? After all, they would take no. an anti position against the central government to keep the argument off. No, I don't think so. I think if uh, to to the extent that they can accommodate mm. uh, the Akali government, the, uh, cent uh, the BJP government will do so. Mm. I mean, I remember during the UP, but it depends, you know, I mean, whether it's, de de whether when it comes to debt burden, if they make demands which are, cannot be met. I mean, it happened during the UPA government when Mamta wanted certain demands and although Pranam Mukherjee was there and the finance minister and all that, but she, the kind of demand she made, it, the, the rules were such that they could not do it, you know. So if they make demands which are just cannot be met, mm. then it's different. But to the extent it's possible, I'm sure the Akali Dal government is, is, I mean, the BJP government, to the extent that it can accommodate them, it will certainly do so, as far as the economic side is concerned. As far as the dr drug menace is concerned, I think it's really in the hands of the sad government. They have, they are the ones who have to take the initiative, and like uh, one of our friends said, that they must have show the political will to do so. Because the fact of the matter is that is the nexus at the highest levels, and it's not just enough to catch peddlers and all that. But he's right, absolutely right. You have to catch the kingpins. Unless you crack down at that level. And, and, and added to that is simultaneously, you have to generate employment for the youth. You know, because unless there's employment, you know, the, the youth will keep dr drifting to, and, and the drugs are easily available. So it's, 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 they'll just go into that. It's a cause and effect thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. uh, Gurpreet, final word to you, and we'll wrap this up. Yes, uh, so, you know, we all know Punjab has a great potential. And I would like to see central government investing in Punjab. We are not asking for favors. Invest in infrastructure, invest in basic, providing us basic amenities. And we promise we have a greater potential and we will return that investment with interest. So Punjab, if they invest in infrastructure, Punjab has a good business potential and it, it, it has proven itself over and over again. So if they invest in Punjab, Punjab will be a high return state. For the, for the nation. All right, positive words to wind up on. Thank you very much, all of you, for coming in from uh, all parts of the world and joining us in this discussion about Punjab, the land of the five rivers. Well, a lot of potential over there, a lot of enterprise over there as well among the Punjabis, but uh, that potential has to be realized at the end of the day, and that's in the hand of the government. Thank you very much, Anita and Vishal, for coming in and sharing your points of view and uh, taking questions from our uh, panelists over here. Well, uh, that's it on our presentation about Punjab, but we'll be doing wish lists from other states. So if you have another state that you want to talk about, you have a wish list for your state, do write into us, tweet out to us, use Facebook, and we'll for sure discuss it. Thanks so much for watching.